Your friends are supposed to be the ones to be there and to pick you up, to be selfless. Jesus healed people based on the faith of the people they had in their life. And then eventually you're gonna be like that. It's gonna drain you and then you're gonna start thinking that way because I have experienced that as well. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to The Walk Podcast. If you're new here, my name is Sam. I post all things lifestyle, faith, and occasional vlog. This channel is essentially a video diary of my life. So if you're watching here on YouTube, hi, hello. If you're listening on Spotify, thank you so much for your support over on Spotify. So a reminder, all of the episodes of The Walk Podcast are on Spotify and they go live on Spotify at the exact same moment that they go live on YouTube. So whether you want to listen in the car or when you're on a walk and you just wanna listen, the Spotify link will be down below. If you would not mind helping me out and rating the show over on Spotify, I'm not gonna be greedy and ask you to rate it five stars, although if you wanted to, I wouldn't be mad at you but any kind of rating would really help so that I can one, see how you guys are feeling about the podcast and two, it just kind of helps push the podcast out there for more people to see it. So I really appreciate your support. It is episode 22, which is crazy. And I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, at what point do I like break it up into seasons? I think at one point I said when January passed and we entered 2024, I might have said like, oh, season two, but I still label them just, I don't know, I guess we're just going to keep going until we're at like the walk podcast episode 105. I don't know. I don't really know how that works, but on Spotify, it allows me to break it up between like season and episode. I don't really know, guys. I'm just figuring out as I go along. But anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. I am doing okay. I'm doing more than okay, actually. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, if you want to keep up with me and all the things that I am doing in my day-to-day -day life, like for example, I just got a tattoo the other day, Mother's Day passed, and I did like a little paint and sip with my mom. So if you want to keep up with me and look at all like the little things I do that I don't necessarily post on YouTube, um, my link to my Instagram as well as my TikTok is down below. I am pretty active on both. I am really trying to up my Instagram game because a couple months passed by where I really was not using it at all, but I'm kind of falling in love with it all over again and, you know, posting reels and all the things like that. So all of my information will be down below and let's be friends. I love talking to you guys. I love reading your comments, your DMs, all the things. So anyway, What's going on, guys? Like I just said, Mother's Day passed. If you are a mama, a pet mama, um, someone who is like a mother to somebody else, whatever it is, happy Mother's Day, happy belated Mother's Day. I hope you feel loved and you feel, or you felt special that day. And if you didn't, I'm really sorry. I'm thinking of you and I think that you're a rock star. So happy belated Mother's Day to you guys. So today we're gonna be talking about friendships and specifically adult friendships and specifically even more specifically why the people that you surround yourself with matter something that I've been thinking about a lot um, something that I kind of read as I was reading the Bible and I also saw um, glimpse of a, uh, glimpses of it in the chosen that show if you if you guys know um, it's like a, a interpretation of the gospels in the bible and jesus's life and the works that he did and the miracles he did and all the things i think there are are there four seasons now yeah there's four seasons they haven't started streaming the fourth season yet although it was in theaters so some of you maybe saw it and they're filming season five right now so i really really love the show and so anyway as i've been reading and watching and just kind of you know immersing myself in the word and all the things it's something that i've kind of noticed um about you know how there are specific examples of why the people that you surround yourself with matter. I don't know why it's like hard for me to speak today. My thoughts are kind of jumbled today, but that's okay. We're going to get through it. So we are going to get into the Bible. I think I have three specific passages that I want to read. We're going to do like a little story time. I'm going to read it to you. It's going to be fun. Um, but before we get into that, I kind of just, can I like, can I rant for a little bit? It's not like an angry rant. It's more of just like something that's been on my mind that I kind of, I'm like thinking if I want to dedicate a episode to this specific topic, 
but I have to be very, very careful about the way that I word this topic um, because people could come for me. It might This might be a hot take. It might not. I don't know. But um, I'm just going to speak my mind a little bit, okay? Um, and I mean no disrespect to, to anyone, but... Um, you know, maybe I, maybe I won't make a specific video dedicated to this. I don't know. But um, as I, you guys know, I'm active, like I said, on TikTok and Instagram. And so I see, you know, thousands and that, well, I don't scroll that much anymore. But I see a lot of TikToks and reels um, every day. And one thing that I have noticed, especially because, you know, I post Christian content sometimes. So my algorithm is like Christian TikTok, right? Um, and so I see a lot of things and something that has been bugging me a little bit and I have to be very careful because I don't want this to make me like resent, you know, Christian creators and like Christian TikToks specifically because I am a part of that community. But I have noticed that I feel like Christianity lately has just become trendy, um, and I spoke to a friend about this not that long ago, and I think it's beautiful that so many people are, like, coming to Jesus and, and um, you know, starting their walk with him and their own relationship and that they it's just they get so excited about it that they just want to share it, right? I have done that. That's literally how this podcast started. Um, and I post an occasional thing on TikTok here and there of, like, I read a really good like devotional that I want to share or like I read something in the Bible and I want to work through it in my mind and I want to talk about it and then I just share it because I'm like maybe this will help somebody too the way it helped me you know so I do it I've been there I know what that feeling is like um but I think you have to be very careful with whether it's genuine or not because I've seen I've seen TikToks where someone's talking about a scripture that's taken completely out of context than than the original meaning. Um, Or, for example, I'm not going to name names, but I saw somebody um, make like a get ready with me for church. It was a guy, a young guy. Get ready with me for church. And he's a good looking dude. He obviously works out. He had like an eight pack. And he's walking around shirtless in the video. And, like, he knows what he's doing. It's like a Christian thirst trap. And I I just think you have to be careful with, like, who you follow, especially these young people. Like, I get it, right? They want to share the gospel. They want to share what they're learning in church. And they want to share, like, I get it. But we live in a day and age where everybody has a podcast. I'm including myself in this, right? Everybody and their mother wants a podcast. Everybody and their mother has an opinion and everybody thinks that their opinion is the right opinion. And if somebody has a wrong opinion then they're, or a different opinion, then they're wrong. And, you know, it just there's so many voices proclaiming different truths out there. And it's a little scary to me. Um, so much so that like the other day, I kind of, I had a day where there was just everything on my TikTok was somebody preaching something. And I noticed that people were like preaching contradicting things to each other. And I was like, whoa. I was like, you know what? Maybe I need to stop consuming all of this because it's so many voices. And I'm guilty of like, if I find a video of somebody saying something that's like, it sounds really convincing. And I'm like, yes, I'm on board. I believe you. Which I know I'm not the only one. That's just, that's the the media world that we live in. And I was like, maybe I need to be careful with listening to all these voices and just like focus on my own experiences of like reading the Bible, my own Bible studies, my own experiences at my church, you know, like, I don't know. I'm just kind of being careful of like what I consume. And like, I prayed not that long ago, a couple of days ago of like, God, just help me like filter what I watch, what I listen to, even if it is Christian, because these days I've said this before, anybody could say they're a Christian. It doesn't necessarily mean anything it's it's just a label you want to look at the heart posture so um I just you know was praying for like wisdom and discernment just to like be able to differentiate between some things that I should watch some things that I shouldn't watch and it's just I just really hope that all these creators myself included I'm including myself in this like I hope that it always stays 
genuine because you can always tell when somebody posts something just for views and you know what I mean so I just want you guys to know that I'm gonna try everything in my power to make sure that my content on every single platform that I'm on is super genuine um you know like I said if I read a devotional I'm like whoa that was so good maybe somebody else needs to hear this I think there's nothing wrong with that I think reading a passage in the bible like I'm gonna do today that I was like whoa this 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 is like a lesson here. Like, let me, let me share it. I think there's nothing wrong with that. I even think, you know, if you have a new dress or a new outfit that you want to show off that you so happen to wear to church on a Sunday, I don't think that's wrong. I think it's just the heart posture, right? So like, that's something I would do, right? Church outfit of the day. Like that's, that's fine, but you're not going to see me half naked and slapping Jesus on it and being like Christian TikTok, hashtag Christian TikTok. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's a heart posture. So I want you guys to know that I'm always going to try to be as genuine as I can. And, um, I'm never going to make it forced. I always try to talk about things that like are on my heart, something that I learned, you know, um, and, you know, feel free to like call me out if you think it's not being genuine, but I'm, that's something that I'm really trying to like implement for myself. And I think, um, certain things and like the Christian TikTok world, I'm just going to say it, are quite toxic and so I would just encourage you to just kind of um be careful with what you consume that's all I wanted to say that's just a rant I've been thinking about that for a while um but for something for some reason like this past week is something that's really been like on my mind and I kind of wish this is like such a rant ramble tangent I'm gonna get into the main topic I promise um I just, I, I, I wish it was more just like everybody had their own relationship with God in private more. Cause that's kind of how it used to be. And I feel like it was a lot more peaceful that way. But anyway, that was just a rant. I don't know. I, I just felt the need to, to rant about that. Okay. Anyway, today I want to talk about friendships and specifically adult friendships. You guys know, if you don't know, I'm 28 years old. Hmm. No, I'm not. I'm 27. Hmm. <laughs> I'm turning 28 in July. I don't know why I said 28. I'm not 28 yet. I'm 27. Uh, I'm turning 28 in July. But I'm in my, you know, older 20s. And so um, I think that there's something really beautiful about the friends that you make in your 20s. Um, Making friends is hard. I've spoken about it before, how I've, you know, I went to a new church last summer and went without, you know, knowing a single soul. And little by little I made I made friends and now I have you know a really nice cute group of, of, of friends that I made at church and you know I've made friends at work friends that I hang out with outside of work you know um so I think there's something really cool about it because you know we all have well we don't all have I am fortunate enough to have some friends that I've known since third fourth grade that are still some of my best friends to this day and Um, I love my childhood friends. I wouldn't trade them for the world. I wouldn't replace them for the world. Um, and it's funny because, well, we'll get into that, but childhood friends are great, but as who, who I was when I was in third grade, obviously is not who I am now, who I was in middle school or high school is not who I am now. And so you grow. And I think there's something beautiful about when you're in your adulthood, finding people that are similar to you, that are like-minded, that are, you know, um, will hold you accountable or that are just more like you, you know, it's, it's, that's beautiful. It's beautiful to do life with people that are just like you, not that you have to be identical, but you understand what I mean. And my friends from, um, elementary school, it was a group of, I think it was six of us. And now it's kind of like three, four of us. That's okay. That happens. But, um, Growing up, we always used to joke that we were so different. Like, we could not have been more different from each other if we tried. Um, We looked different, different nationalities, different backgrounds. We had uh, Italian and Puerto Rican, me. We had Mexican, Colombian, uh, Dominican, um, African-American, Korean. Like, we were just one big, like, we were the United Nations, right? We were just, that was us. We looked different. We had different taste in boys. We had different taste in clothing, different taste in music. We spoke different languages. And we always used to say that we couldn't have been more different from each other, but somehow it just worked. And that's the beauty of childhood. So, like I said, I wouldn't trade them for the world. I love them dearly. Even the ones that I don't really talk to that much anymore, I still think about them all the time. And I wouldn't trade them for the world. I love them. I still have so much love for them. Um, 
But as I've gotten older, one of my best friends in the entire world, she's literally my twin flame. I met her, I was, oh man, 25 when I met her, 24, 25. Um, and we met at work and she's one of my best friends in the entire world. She is a friend that like has never drained my social battery ever. And I don't think she ever could. Um, and we met in our twenties and we have so many similarities and so many things. And it's so cool. People that I've met at church, like-minded, you know, have similar ideas of like what it means to have a good time and, and how to have a good time and, and one friend, what friendship means. And it's, it's just different. It's different and it's cool. But um, I want to talk about why choosing those friends are very important. And so for me, I mean, you can make these friends anywhere, you know, at a place that you enjoy, right? So that could be the gym, a coffee shop, church, work, like I said, anything that brings you joy, you'll find people that also find joy in that same thing at that same place, a library, right? Whatever, based on your passions and your hobbies and your likes. So it's really cool. It could be really fun, scary, really scary to put yourself out there, but fun. Um, and so for me, when I was looking to make more like-minded friends in my 20s, I really wanted to find friends at church. Um, because for me, right, if I, if I, if you guys know, obviously, hello, huh, hi, we're here, so you know this, my faith is really important to me. And so if I believe in the power of prayer, I believe that prayer is so, so powerful. It's one of the most powerful weapons that we have here on earth. If I don't have people of that similar mindset and I don't have people to pray over me or with me, then that was a, that felt like a problem to me. So that's why I was craving that, you know, um, so there are a couple different instances in the Bible where it shows who you surround yourself with matters. And let me just say, I am never, not once, going to say in this podcast episode that this is to replace people. I'm not saying to drop those friends and make new ones. Maybe some of you should drop some friends. But only you will know that. I don't know that. Um, I am not saying, you know, to drop people. I'm not saying I want to drop people and that I'm replacing my friends. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's just in addition to my childhood friends, I wanted to make more friends. In addition, make the group bigger, right? So um, there are three instances, like I said, three examples, and we're going to get into the Bible. I'm just going to read it to you. You can read along with me if you want, or you can just listen. This can be like story time in um, school that was my first um, like relaxing ASMR experience of my childhood was when I was in preschool and the teacher would read to me it was I believe it was Dr. Seuss the first book um, yeah so we can do that if you want just <laughs> sit back and relax and I will I will read to you so the first place we're gonna go is the book of Mark and we're gonna start at chapter 2 so let me get there these tabs, if you have a Bible and you're like me and you don't know like the order of the books, these little tabs, I got them on Amazon and they just, it's so easy to find the books. I 10 out of 10 recommend. Just a little side note. Okay, so we're going to go to the book of Mark chapter two and we're going to start at verse one and we're going to go to verse 12. And this is a pretty um, popular scene. I'm going to call it a scene. I don't know what else to call it popular scene in the Bible, um, occurrence, whatever, <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay. So this is where Jesus heals a paralyzed man. And in all three of these little blurbs that I'm going to read to you, you'll see that Jesus healed people based on the faith of the people they had in their life. Okay. And it's really, really cool and really powerful. So we're going to read verses one through 12. So I'm going to read it to you. Here we go. When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head, above Jesus' head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. 
But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, What is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking, so he asked them, Why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven? Or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, We've never seen anything like this before. Okay, so that was verse 12. So what's happening here? Jesus is in a, in a home that is so packed, you can't get to the front door. And this paralyzed man wanted to get healed by Jesus. And they he had these friends who were carrying him and they decided to think outside of the box because they had faith that they knew if they could get this man to Jesus in any 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 way that they could he would be healed they knew that they had that faith and so they thought outside the box they they did something completely kind of crazy they tore off the roof or a piece of the roof above Jesus's head and lowered the man down and Jesus sees that faith of his friends and he says because of their faith you are your sins are forgiven he says first because of your friends faith they were faithful to get you to me i'll forgive your sins and then more happens right where um jesus is questioned as he always is um by um the teachers of the religious law the fact that the pharisees correct me if i'm wrong but i think i think it is the pharisees um so they say you know he doesn't have the authority to to forgive sins and jesus says i could do you one better too i could just heal him right now and tell him to walk and that's what he does and everybody was everyone saw that and everybody was amazed and that that probably increased people's faith made their faith stronger by seeing that and none of that would have happened had the paralyzed man's friends not acted on his behalf, which I think is really, really cool. Um, and so they, ha they had enough faith to know that he just needs to be near Jesus. And because of their faith, the man was healed, which is really cool. So that's a very popular, whenever people talk about like, what does the Bible say about friendship? That's a very popular um, occurrence that happens that everyone talks about. So do you have people in your life, and this is something I ask myself too, do you have people in your life that would tear off the roof for you in order to get you healed, in order to get you what you need? Would they tear off the roof for you? It's a really good question. Obviously, we're not being literal, but you know what I mean. The next place we're going to go is Matthew 8, and we're going to start from verse 5, and we're going to go to 13. So Matthew 8, 5 through 13. And this is the faith of a Roman officer. So if you if you don't know, the Roman officers were kind of like, they were hired to make sure that there was order, right? They didn't like Jesus coming around and causing chaos and mayhem and all the things. And in the end, Jesus was turned over to the Roman officers. So, um, you know, not the biggest fans of Jesus. So, Verse 5, when Jesus returned to Capernaum, a Roman officer came and pleaded with him, Lord, my young servant lies in bed, paralyzed and in terrible pain. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. But the officer said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come into my home. Just say the word from where you are and my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under the authority of my superior officers and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go and they go or come and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to those who were following him, he said, I tell you the truth, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. And I tell you this, that many Gentiles will come from all over the world, from east and west, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast of the kingdom of heaven. But many Israelites, those for whom the kingdom was prepared, will be thrown into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the Roman officer, Go back home, because you believed it has happened. And the young servant was healed that same hour. So the servant was not physically even able to come to Jesus. He wasn't able to move. He wasn't able to leave the home. And his officer knew that. And so he went on his behalf. And Jesus said, okay, 
I'll come heal him for you. So that alone would have been fine, right? The, the, the officer went and got Jesus, brought Jesus back to his home and had his servant healed. Even that would have been cool, right? I probably still would be talking about him in this video. But then he says, I'm not, what does he say? I'm not worthy to have you in my home. Yeah, I'm not worthy to have you to come into my home. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. That's some faith right there. That is faith. And because of his faith, which was rare for a Roman soldier, regardless, but because of his faith, Jesus was like, whoa, I've never seen faith like this. And then he says, go home, he's healed. And that same day or that same hour, the servant was healed. Crazy. Be not because of anything the servant did, but because of what his soldier or his boss, I guess, his officer, whatever, um, because of his faith and what he did. Are you sensing a theme here? Are you sensing a theme? Okay, we're going to stay in the book of Matthew and we're going to go to verse 21 through 28. Okay, and this is where Jesus heals because of the faith of a gentle Gentile woman. And from what I'm learning, the Gentiles and the Jews, it was like the Gentiles and the Jews, right? And they didn't like associate with each other. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is, I'm learning here. The Jews kind of like looked down on the Gentiles, kind of, sort of. So they were not of equal standard or, you know, okay. So anyway, verse 21. Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Gentile woman who lived there came to him, pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She is bothering us with all her begging. But then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. Which I know at first that's kind of like, dang, Jesus. But wait. But she came and worshipped him. She was still worshipping him, regardless of what he just said. She came and worshipped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. Jesus responded, it isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. Now, I had no idea what that meant. So in my, like, researching, that basically means he's saying, it's not right to take the food from the children. So, like, God's children were... The Jews, right? So he's saying, like, I'm here to serve the Jews, right? So it's not fair for me to take it from the from the table for the Jews and throw it to the dogs, which is the Gentiles, which I know sounds so harsh. And even I, when I was reading this, I was like, oh, I don't like that. But I guess that's also just how it was back then. But it's also Jesus, and he he follows through as he always does. So, um. He responded, it's not right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, that's true, Lord, but even the dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath the master's table. So she's like, even if I can get some leftovers from you, that'll be more than enough. That's her faith speaking. She knew even if she got scraps, you know, the spare little time that Jesus had off to the side, that would be enough. So he says, dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith is great. Your request, your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed because of her faith. So in all three of these instances, the, pe the person that needed the healing, one, could not physically come to Jesus, could not physically talk to Jesus and ask to be healed, or, you know, couldn't touch him, couldn't meet him face to face, right? All three instances, the people that needed healing had people that would act on their behalf and would advocate to Jesus on their behalf. They never physically saw or touched Jesus, and they had someone who loved them enough to act out of their own faith to advocate for their healing, which I think is so beautiful. And every single time, Jesus said, because of your faith, the person he was talking to, because of your faith, your friend, your daughter, your servant is healed. So Jesus does that. He heals people because of their friend's faith. So I could pray for someone who maybe, you know, doesn't pray, doesn't have a relationship with God or whatever. And based on my faith, God can still heal. God can still save, which makes me want to be a better friend. And I think it has been over the past couple months. Like I've been really trying to become like a better friend, a better family member. Um, even from afar, you don't have to tell somebody that, you know, 
you're praying for them. Like, I'm sure the soldier didn't, like, go to his servant, like, moaning in pain in bed, being like, hey, hey, I'm going to go talk to Jesus real quick. He probably just went. You don't need to tell them. They don't need to know. But because of your faith, they can still be healed. There is a, a content creator. She's a YouTuber here, and I believe she has a podcast as well, Melina Ciciotti. She is a Christian. I don't, truthfully, I don't watch her content too, too much anymore. She's also, it's a lot of mommy content. She has four, I think she's younger than me, but she got a husband, a house, a four kids, four kids, two dogs, a cat. We live very different lives. I got the cat part down, though. Um, but anyway, um, some of her content isn't really for me anymore. And that's okay. But I do remember like maybe two years ago, she, I don't remember if, I know she had some problems with like infertility. Like I know she had a miscarriage and she was going in to get a procedure done. And she, I'll never forget, she posted like something on Instagram of like a screenshot of a group chat, like a text chain. And she had a bunch of people in her life that were people of faith, her friends that, you know, that pray and all the things they had a prayer chain for like, I don't know if it was 12 hours or 24 hours, but it was like that whole time there was at least one person praying for her and for her procedure. So they would like take shifts like, um, Emily's going to pray for this half hour. Then Stacy's going to pray for the next half hour and so on and so on. So continually for 12 hours, there were, there was somebody praying for her, lifting her up in prayer, talking to God about her. And I think that's crazy. That's so cool. I honestly, like, I know not everyone is fortunate enough to either have that many friends or have that many friends that pray. I honestly don't know if I would have that, to be honest with you. I don't know if I'm, if I'm there yet. Um, but I just, like, I always think about that and like, that's true friendship. Or like, I think it was another friend of Melena in a, in a separate instance where she brought one of her best friends on and they were talking and um, they were, somebody was waiting on something or trying to make a decision or, or whatever. And her friend was like, okay, we're going to fast. Like, I'm going to fast with you. We're going to do this together. The friend didn't need to fast. The friend wasn't waiting to make a decision, but she was like, I'm going to do this with you because two people together are stronger than one. I think that's so beautiful. That's what friendships should be. You know, I'm learning as I get older that yes, friendships, are, are supposed to be there for the good times, for the laughter, for the doing fun things and, and all and all of that. But friendship is also for the hard times too. When you're suffering, when you're, you know, when you're dealing with loss, when you feel like you lost everything and you have nothing else, your friends are supposed to be the ones to be there and to pick you up, to be selfless. And that's the kind of friend that I'm trying to be as well. And it's hard I'm not gonna lie to you. It's hard. It's draining. I have friends that, you know, that will reach out to me sometimes about things. I'm always trying to be there for them. But after a while, I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, <sighs> like, I'm tired. Like, I need someone to pour into me now. And it's hard when you don't have that all the time. Um, but it's all just about like loving people like Jesus. And that's being a good friend selflessly, you know. And so, I read, I copied and pasted something from like an article or something. I'm going to read it to you. It says, we have enough faith in dentists, doctors, or even restaurants that we like, and we feel confident about their ability to meet our friend's need, right? Like this dentist is great. They filled my cavity really well. Like they'll do a good job with you. Or I really like this restaurant. You should go. Um, but do we have as much faith in Jesus as we do in dentists, doctors, and restaurants? We have faith in people and places with which we are familiar just as we don't feel comfortable recommending a doctor who never cared for us or a restaurant at which we haven't eaten, we won't feel comfortable bringing friends to a Jesus with whom we are not familiar. The more we come to know Jesus, the greater our faith in his ability to put lives back together. If Jesus has done it for us, how much greater will our confidence be that he can do the same for our friend? And I've experienced that. You know, Jesus, you guys know, Jesus brought me out of a pit beginning of 2023. And I saw how he turned my life around. I saw what his love felt like. And I want that for my friends, you know, I want that for them and I know that he can do it. So I will pray on their behalf either until they can pray on their own or I'll pray with them because again, two is stronger than one. So this is just to kind of drive the point home that who you surround yourself with matters. And I read something today. I didn't even plan to say this, but when I was reading Proverbs today, 
It says something about, hold on, hold on, let me find it. Stay away from fools, for you won't find knowledge on their lips. And the book of Proverbs, and even just the Bible in general, talks a lot about, like, who you surround yourself with. Like, surround yourself, have you ever heard, like, surround yourself, or show me who you surround yourself with, and I can show you who you are. Show me who your friends are, and I can show you what your future's like. Or, like, there's so many different, like, quotes and examples of that um because who you surround yourself really matters and you're going to start to become like-minded and so if you're with people that are constantly being negative constantly thinking about the worst in situations then eventually you're going to be like that it's going to drain you and then you're going to start thinking that way because i have experienced that as well and it's draining and it's not fun so surround yourself with people of of life people that uplift you and i know this was very christian centered because that's just what I wanted to talk about and what I've been learning and because friendships with people who can pray for you and with you are important to me. But even if it, if that's not important to you, it doesn't matter if you make friends in the gym or you make friends, um, like I said, in a coffee shop or, or a book club or whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be prayer centered, you know, but find people who will lift you up, who will find the positive, who will be there for you when you, when you lose everything, who's going to be there, right? We can all have friends that we go out with and get dinner and dress cute and take pictures and get drinks and all the things and all the cute aesthetic things. But are those same people going to be there with you when you hit rock bottom? One of my best friends, the day after my breakup, it was a Friday night, 11 p.m. I got home from work and I didn't want to be alone she came on this very couch she's married she has a husband she left her husband at home she came here slept on my couch she sat here with me on a Friday night she cried with me she hugged me and she slept here with me so that I wasn't alone those are the kinds of friends you need and they're rare they're rare but maybe it could start with us maybe we can start being better friends to other people and it's just gonna start a chain reaction because I have friends in my life where like I have one friend in particular who she's such a good friend and I've told her I've like I've never had support the way that you have supported me and she has inspired me to be a better friend to others so maybe we can be the beginning of a beautiful chain reaction of just people that are better friends and better people so anyway this was a very very rambly episode um but I hope that you guys enjoyed um, I am going to go on to my Instagram for the next episode. So be sure to go follow that episode will be coming out in two weeks. And I want to do an episode talking all about your hot takes when it comes to relationships and dating, dating apps, whatever you want to talk about in the realm of dating and relationships. I want to know your hot takes and I'm going to read them. I'm going to react to them, see if I agree or disagree. And I think it's going to be really fun. So that's going to be the next episode. So be sure to go follow me on Instagram if you are not following me yet. And when we approach uh, that episode coming up, I will post a story and I will ask you for all your hot takes. So make sure to look out for that within the next two weeks. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for watching and for your support as always. And I will see you guys in my next video.